Arsenal Fan TV, Mo, what a fantastic performance today. First off, you know, <laughs> we were up against it. You know, we, it's, both teams really looked a bit lacklustre, but they were playing a better ball, yeah, definitely. I don't but think Swansea second, looked lacklustre in the first yeah. half. I think Swansea were brilliant in the first half. I think, you know, to an extent, we made them... We gave them enough time and space to look really, yeah. really good, but they took full advantage. And I just think that we were lucky. We were living a very charmed life in the first half, not to go down uh, one or two nil into half time. But for me, I think that's the difference between very good players and world class players. Because when Gomez is one on one with Peter Cech, and you know that guy standing in front of you, that world class keeper is standing in front of you, it just puts a little bit of doubt in a striker's yeah. mind, and you think, all right, I'm going to have to do really well to score here. You know, I, I think another keeper, you just think, right, I'll slot it past well, him. I was drawing the sort of comparisons today, looking at Fabianski, yeah. who used to be one of our keepers, yeah, yeah, yeah. who at the set piece didn't look too clever, yeah. and also with a Koscielny goal didn't look yeah. too clever, and yeah. then you look at check at the so other, you is, see straight away exactly, one of the differences. Yeah. And that is the difference. <clears throat> you, you need to really look a bit more kind of closely than just a spectacular save. Just the fact that Peter Cech goes to ground, goes as far out as he can, but doesn't make contact with the player. He binds enough time for Koscielny to come back. He makes Gomez panic a little bit, so he has to throw a dive. It's little things like that that define world-class players. World-class players excel in particular moments in games. And I, I said this about Peter Cech recently. He keeps you in a game long enough for you to go and win it. And he kept us in a game. He was in the right place when Gomez had a header as well. It was straight at him. But that's down to good positioning. It's not a great save or anything. Just doing what you need to do, doing a really sterling job effortlessly. And that leaves you in a position where at half time it's nil nil instead of two nil and Arsenal can give you a kick up the backside and you come out and you're a different team and we were a completely different team after half time and Koscielny all game today you just have to take your hat off to him the, to think that we plucked him from the second tier of French football I say we you know mm. kind of taking credit for Arsenal's work but mm. Arsenal Wenger plucked him from the second tier of French football and he's absolutely world class you know arguably our most consistent player in this team he's absolutely brilliant I'm just so proud of the boys today because to an extent at half time I was thinking to myself if we come out and win today it's going to be a smash and grab but it was better than a smash and grab in the second half we did everything Swansea did in the first half and more and it's just absolutely brilliant especially with the injury crisis all of us were so nervous we were talking about what the hell are we going to do? We're talking about should we put Bellerin up there or Cazorla in midfield and talking about all these ways. Ultimately, Joel Campbell's come in and he's proved the point today because I think in the first half, it did. he was a little bit behind the rest of the team. But in the second half, he just kept his cool and he kept on plugging away. He worked very hard. He got stuck in. I don't think he offered enough protection in the first half uh, for Bellerin against Montero, but he really upped his game. And I'm so happy for him that he got that goal because this is his opportunity to say, I'm at least going to make it difficult for you to drop me. And today, I think he's gone a little way to building up enough confidence to really put in a few stellar performances. Delighted for him that he got his goal. Just Arsenal really, really are contenders this year. The three games where in the league that we're going to play with this injury crisis, I've said, I've sent you on the way up that if we get seven points out of that, I'll be happy. And I think this is our most difficult game out of the three. Swansea away, Tottenham at home, we should be all right. West Brom away, we should be all right. You know, we've got the quality to win them two games. Today was a big test. We showed, I'll take a phrase from Chelsea's next manager, Brendan Rodgers. We showed, <laughs> we showed bags of character today, great character. And uh, we absolutely nailed it, nailed the performance. I can't have a feeling you'd have a dig at Chelsea today. <laughs> Listen, a few words of commiserations for the Chelsea fans. Another defeat for Mar your, your, your favourite son, Mourinho. I mean, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, no, look, I just think it's not really Mourinho's fault, you know. It, you know, he, he's a little bit weak, a little bit naive, you know, it's, it's not really his fault. He hasn't got a massive budget. He's doing quite <laughs> well for himself. To be, what is it? I don't even know where they are right now. I don't look that far down the table. On my phone, you only see till about 12th. The, the thing is, in all honesty, right, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. <laughs> I, was, I was talking to you on the way up and I was saying that there's a holy grail in football, right? This is what every fan, everyone in football wants for their team. Trophies, entertainment and admiration. If you can achieve all three of them, you are the club. You know, Bayern Munich have done it at times. Uh, Barcelona have achieved it at times. Arsenal have achieved it at times. You're playing amazing football. You win loads of trophies. People respect you. They want to watch you. You're entertaining. And it's a holy grail in football. The thing is with Mourinho, and this is why he doesn't have longevity at a club, the only thing he can do is bring trophies. And that's on a massive budget. 
No one admires them for the, the way they act, the way they conduct themselves, the way uh, the club is. No one's entertained by them. And when you're not delivering trophies, because you haven't got the other two to complete that holy grail, if you're not delivering trophies, people tire very, very quickly. Even if you are delivering trophies, eventually people want to see that entertainment. People want to be that club that is admired in world football. And he can never, ever deliver that, which is why he'll never last anywhere. So look, Mourinho, Cheerio. I, could, I, could, I, just think I could just see. On the way out. I could just see Eva Canero turning up on his house, trick or treat a night with a mask <laughs> on. <or something. laughs> Do you know what? I hope that I, I want to go to court and just sit there with popcorn, looking at that court hearing. It's going to be brilliant. It'll be more entertaining than Chelsea playing football. That's what you got to do. I mean, I'm so happy for somebody like Joel. He's been there for four years, oh, yeah. and he takes his chance to score a fantastic yeah. goal. That but once, right now, absolutely. But once again, I, I. I feel like laughing because when we lost to Sheffield Wednesday, everybody